All right, so let's continue taking a look at these comments from Airwick. Next here, he says, I would also sketch across, I would also sketch the circle for the boss on the top face, extrude up from, extrude up to the bottom perimeter face and use that sketch to locate the hole afterwards. This I thought was a really excellent idea. Uh, when I, when it came time for me to locate the hole for the counter bore at the end of this model, I created a standalone sketch and then I located that counter bore on that standard, uh, on that, on that sketch. But what Eric is recommending I do here instead is create this underside circular boss with a sketch from the very topmost surface. So I could create this sketch instead of creating it down there, I could create the sketch shift S for sketch. S key circle, I could create the sketch here on this surface, then create my boss extrude and then reuse that sketch to locate the hole here at the center of that sketch. So I thought that was an excellent idea, Airwick. Um, I guess in practice, it might look something like this. We would do our extrusion. We would go up to face, up to face. And then when it comes time to create that hole, we could show this sketch here and then we could go to the hole command and we could pick this point here and that gives us the hole. Very, very clever. I really like that. I thought that was, that was, yeah, that was awesome. So thank you for that. And let's see what else we got here. We got, also you don't need an actual point. You could uh, use the boss and place a hole with a mate connector. Another thing to look forward to, yes, uh, I am very much looking forward to learning more about mate connectors. I think that's going to be, uh, that's going to be really cool. Uh, note that on the far right of the toolbar is a search box, so you can click on this and search for commands. So that's cool. So if I can't find the rib, you know, I'm, I'm like, where's the rib? Is there a rib command? I could just go up here and then type in R-I-B. Boom, rib. I would have just found it right then and there. It would have been that easy. Rib. Ah. Uh, Okay, that's good to know. Uh, one more tip, if you hold shift, when hitting enter to confirm, the feature repeats useful for things like back fillets, uh, different radii, etc. All right, well, let's try both of those together. Uh, so, you know, Eric just told us that we can, told us two valuable things there, right? He, a little bit old, earlier, he told us that if we press the F key on our keyboard, F, F for fillet, shift F, shift F for fillet. Then we could pick this edge and this edge, and then let's go over to our radius value here. And then he's saying, if you hold shift while hitting enter to confirm a feature, it repeats. So this is gonna be a radius four, and then the larger one is gonna be a radius of 11. So we go over here to our radius of four, and then I'm gonna do uh, shift enter, oh. And it just jumps right back into that command again. Okay, and then that's going to be a radius of 11. All right, Airwick, that's pretty cool. I like that. Cool. Well, thank you, Airwick. Uh, that was a lot of great information that you shared in that tip. This is like pro time for these tips uh, when we get into uh, Finn, Finn Anders and, and Airwick. They're really giving us a lot here, but awesome stuff and very, very useful. So thank you so much to Airwick. Uh, excellent job. And I'm going to be definitely using a lot of these tips. Okay, so our next comment comes in here from I-R-M-A-S-U-S-A-N-T-I. -S 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 it says, right-click on part one and choose assign material. Yep, so we were able to get in there and do that. Uh, we were able to get in and assign material, so thank you for that. And our next tip comes in here from Sven, and he says, uh, the mirror might have added weight, so use face mirror or mirror faces. Yep, so we did talk about that as well, some of the different options in the mirror command. Let me delete these extra fillets. In the mirror command, we have those um, extra options. So we have the option for feature mirror or part mirror or face mirror. So we were able to do that using the feature mirror, but I see in here also we got face mirror, and Sven is saying that might be the way to go as well. So... Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Sven. Very much appreciate it. That's going to be very helpful uh, to know about. And um, good stuff. Good stuff. And Christian is here, old friend. Christian Bonk is here, and he's saying, uh, great start, Toby, for the whole feature. Instead of creating a sketch point and concentric reference with the boss, 
I created a mate connector that references the boss and base and moved it negative four millimeters. In time, I think you prefer mate connectors for creating and assembling stuff, fun days ahead, yeah. So I'm not quite there, uh, not quite able to, or ready to use mate connectors yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be in the next week or so that I'm really gonna be doing a deep dive on that functionality. I'm very much looking forward to it. And again, just getting the feedback from multiple users saying, hey, mate connectors might be the way to go. It totally gets it on my radar as a SolidWorks user. And so I'm definitely gonna be on the lookout for those make, that mate connector functionality. So thank you for that, Chris. Uh, very much appreciate it and good to hear from you, old friend. And the final comment here says uh, from John, he says, I teach on shape at high school, looking forward to your videos. I always press P to toggle the or origin planes on and off, but I guess others don't mind the clutter. Nice job. Okay, cool. So I can press the letter P on my keyboard. I like that. I like that, John. Thank you. That's cool. That's a quick, easy way to turn off all of those planes. So P, P to turn off all those planes. Very, very cool. All right. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you guys so much. That was such good feedback that I got from everybody on the, those different tips and tricks. Uh, that's going to definitely help me as a SolidWorks user uh, learn more about the Onshape interface. And those are some things that I was kind of struggling with that didn't jump right out at me. So if you're watching this and you're a SolidWorks user, I hope that that also helps you to kind of navigate your way through Onshape for the first couple of times. And I'm looking forward to posting some more of these tutorials just so that I can get more great feedback from the Onshape community. So once again, thank you so much. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and of course, be sure to come back and join us for the next episode. See you, everybody.